Hello and welcome to episode 6 of this seven part series on harp ornamentation. My name is Karen Marshall Say and I'm a traditional musician from Scotland. I'm based in Edinburgh and I play the harp or the clarsach. In fact, I play several different types of harps. The one you see a lot in these videos is this big red modern levered gutstrung clarsach or harp or Scottish harp. There's lots of different names for these instruments. I also play wire strung harps. There will be, be clips at various points of me playing pedal harp and bray harp as well. The series is looking at ornamentation and ways to play ornamentation, various techniques that you can actually use on any harp. Although obviously I've been demonstrating on these harps that I have and mostly up to this point on traditional music. We're still stay, staying in the traditional world this week, but next week we'll explore a few other possibilities that you can use these techniques with. So this week we're going to be looking at the idea of variation in particular. What is it? How do you do it? Well, you actually already know an awful lot of the ways of doing it if you've been following along. And if you haven't, episodes one to five are all still up on YouTube on my channel. So if you'd like to subscribe to my channel, that's great. And it gives you notification of, of what's there and when new things comes up. So it could be, when you say a variation, it could be a variation just in a small phrase, just in a tiny little part of a tune that you've just played that phrase a little differently sometime. And I'll show you an example of that later on. It could also be a change to a whole part. You could use any of the techniques that we've been working on. Remember we looked at the Uy Nakashka, the Easter Eggs tune, for example. That's a great tune for taking any technique that you've learned. It could be the bees plat, the, the 432 triplet, or the beat, or the little finger plat or something, and try and apply that. Take the skeleton notes. If you look back on the episode where we looked at several episodes where we've looked at that tune. So, so you could create a series of parts, you know, one uses uh, thumb chokes, one uses bees plats, one uses something else, one, and you, you build up and you might end that style of variation with perhaps a big gurgly variation, the, my favourite two-handed composite decoration. And we looked at that in previous episodes. What we're going to look at particularly at the minute is creating a melodic variation for a part. It's a way of, of adding notes, of often linking notes. You're keeping the general flavour and shape of the part of the tune that you're working on, but you're, you're going to create something else with it. So that's what we're going to be spending most of our time on today. As we add in a bit of bass hand, there, there will be a couple of little things, and particularly downward chords. We're going to have a look at playing your chords downwards. So let's get started. So in episode one, we had this little study tune. some grace notes into it. I think that was one of the options. There were, there were various. I'll give you a couple of different possibilities there. What we're going to look at now is expanding that into something that's, I think of as, as a melodic variation. You've expanded these notes, but we're now going to do Phrase 
in the tune started on the C, the, the study tune. Just that. So you think about what are the important, what's happening here. You're running down from your C, down to the G and back to that A. So you could do that instead. Instead of going, I'm speeding it up, going back up again, back down. Now this is a long note and one of the things, I'm sure I've said this with a lot of the things that we've looked at, don't get too much into any one pattern, you need to break it. So if you did too much here, it, you, you've gone off the plot, you, you've gone too much. But what you can do is I find a little echo gurgle, if you like, on these long notes. fills it in. Remember one of the things we're, we're struggling with or it's one of the challenges or one of the opportunities on playing hard per Klarsach is what do you do with these long notes? Remember flutes and fiddles can just, singers, they, they can all, they have control of these notes. Pipers can continue playing these notes. Our note's gone as soon as we've played it. So quite often I do this little fill which is just your basic gurgly down, up, back to the main note again, damping the penultimate one out. Obviously you choose, which notes you choose, ring out and that becomes your harmony. So here I've chosen to do it on an F chord. So far we've done have when I was doing them as individual phrases. That second one, instead of just starting in the C, I'm linking from the G. Gurgle. So the third phrase, remember, was So again, think about where the tune's going, what's the shape of the tune, which ones are the main notes? You know, where's it starting? Where's it finishing? What's happening in the middle? You could do something like this. Just adding a little bit of interest. Uh, I'm going out with the range of the actual tune phrase itself. The tune phrase was going... So it's going from that A up to the C, down to the E, but I've chosen to go up to the C. Just for a little bit of interest. And our last phrase, remember, was... those triad notes. I'm going to turn that into a pick up again. Pick up in the C. So this is what we get if we run it all together. Sometimes I might want to start with a pick up in the C. more. 
remember where we came from. and choices and you might do that the first time round and then you might want to tweak it a little bit more the second time you play it or, or the third. Another possibility might be something like this. Just a little bit more involved the first time we did this. Now I've filled in those notes as well. Going on to the first time we played it, we just did. Now we have. So those two together become this. Good little workout for your fingers. Kept that little gurgle in at the end. There's just a slight tweak at the end. The first time we did Longer notes here and now we fill them in by going down to that E in the G. Nice little burble, gurgle. And I've changed this one. This was the, the, the phrase that I changed most and gone out with the, the parameters of the, the, the notes of that phrase. So it's a, it's a bit of a point of interest, so I've just wanted to do it a slightly different way this time. So the first time we did... This time we're going to go... Very similar, but they are different. I'm not going up to that E initially in the first one. Still got the B pick up, down from the C, back up, the thumb's now going to the E, thumb to the C, thumbs up to there, this is how we're going to end this version. involved again. So. That's what we're going to do. The first time, our first variation was simply. Now we have this second melodic variation, if you like. in there 
there as well. I'm hearing that in my head as I'm playing. So, to take it from the beginning, this was the basic. something in. is a study. Uh, I might turn it into a, a full tune. I haven't got a second part for it yet but we might manage to get something before the end of the series. You never know. So take it slowly and use it to try out. Experiment with all the different ways. You could start with it absolutely plain to remind yourselves of it. You could do it in plain in two hands. You could block out some chords, you could try some left hand octaves, you could add in, go through adding in lots of cuts. So the way we did, the way we used it in those initial episodes, you could use it just to try and feel what sort of ornaments you would like to put in when, cuts, little finger plaits, there's a really lovely place where really go to town with it and make it a vehicle to, to practice and to try the, all these things out and then you could you could maybe do several of those you could add in the first variation you could go back to the the ornamented tune you could add in the second variation you could end it on a, a complicated variation with lots of left hand or you could bring it back down again lots of choices there Okay, so now we want to look at this method of melodic variation in an actual tune. I know we can create, we can call that one a tune, but it's just something that's been created to, to practice. So I'd like to look at Ka the Yows, which is a lovely, tender pastoral or, or love song, if you like. It was collected by Burns. There's, there's various different verses to it. So it's not the sort of thing you're going to be playing uh, particularly fast. You want to, even if you're not going to be singing it, you really want to have an idea of what the, the, the song's about. Uh, As I get doon the waterside, there I met my shepherd lad. He rowed me sweetly in his plaid and he called me his dearie. And it, 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 there's, there's loads of verses. There's a chorus, there's, there's a verse and a chorus. You've got ka the yows, which are the, the ewes, the sheep. To the nows, to the hills, call them where the heather grows, call them where the burnley rows, my bonny dearie. So, but there's this, there's this absolutely beautiful, you know, he entices her, he wants her to go down by the waterside. Will you go down the waterside to see the waves, say, sweetly glide? Beneath the hazels, spreading wide, the moon shines, say, clearly. So the scene's being set, it's a lovely moonlit night. And she's a bit... Uh, unsure, I was bred up at Nasick school, my shepherd lad, to play the fool. And ah, the day to sit and do and nobody to see me. So she's not really up for this, just hanging around, not doing very much with a shepherd lad. And he goes on to, to promise her, you shall get gowns and ribbons, meat, cough leather, shin upon your feet. 
and in my arms you'll lie and sleep and ye shall be my dearie. So she's, he's giving her all the promises and she goes on to say that, you know, if, if, he, if he stands by that, then, yep, he can wrap her up in his plaid and she'll be his dearie. And it's this last verse I just think is beautiful. While waters wimple to the sea, while day blinks in the lift, see he, till clay called death shall blind my ye, ye shall be my dearie. So basically, to, to, to the waters wimple to the sea, till to, to all the water, all the burns, all the rivers run to the sea. The day blinks in the lift, see he, so it's the, it's the sky, day, daylight's coming in the sky. And of course, till clay called, clay called death shall blind my ye, so until... Her eyes close for the last time, you shall be my dearie. So, let's just have a look at the tune. You might well be familiar with this tune. It's very well known for good reason. of the tune. Let's just run through it. You've got this D E A. And if you're looking for chords, I'd place a sort of an open D minor underneath that. You're going to a C as the tune's going. Try and take that with your fourth finger if you want to stretch up, you have plenty of time. Now do stretch up. I would bring my third on to the B to climb up. We've gone to a G chord here, so we have our A minor. do it downward. So it's three repeated notes and they're all tune notes. I would still play that three two. Probably just then two three. Remember what I said about not getting too hung up on your fingering if you want to add in decorations. Nice big downward chord. Octaves with the fifth in the middle. I can see it a bit better if I do it with this hand. I'm not used to playing them down there with my right hand. You're literally just, instead of coming up the way, is still in the last note of the chord. And the melody note still comes in ever so slightly after the last chord note. I'm going to go to a C chord. Back to the D minor. becomes quite personal. You, some people might want to run up. That's fine, but I'm going to want to put in some decorations. And also, when people are in this, temptation is to play this far too soon. You've really got to give these notes space and sitting there with your thumb on a string ready to play chances are you're going to play it earlier than you should. Okay, so I'm not going to spend too much time. I'm just going to give you a, a 
a once through of what I might do to decorate this. spent an awful lot of time on is this turn at the end. Going from a note to the note above it, back to the note, the note below, and when you play it for this last time, this bit has to be lighter, and then heavier again. I might have mentioned them before, I would call that a narrow turn, and again, of the tune. I've got a little bit of decoration and we've got an idea of what we want to do with our left hand. So you might want to do on this harp something along the lines of into the basic tune. So let's have a look at what I've done there. Remember the first phrase? Same principle as we looked at in that little exercise tune. I'm expanding those notes out. Got a little pick up because it is often good to link. I wouldn't launch straight into this. I would play the tune first. So instead of coming up in there and another I'm doubling this E and the tune was going and I've added in the tune just went straight down linking all the notes. So the tune came straight up, but we have to go on a little journey first. So we've got down to the A, bring your third on to the B again. So we've done. That 
that's what's happening on the tune. But we've got so up to the E, down to the C, back up to the E. And it probably is good just to learn some decorations in this. So I would cut up my hands off. Comes back on. Now I'm doing another turn here, but I think of this one as being a slightly wider turn because it's not adjacent strings. You're repeating the notes you've played. have to do this I just find it, it tends to be what happens so there's one sort of point of interest where you, you deviate just that little bit more so here I'm starting on the A rather than the, the G the tune went G C E and I was playing a C chord underneath it here I've moved the start to the A so we're ending on the same note and I would put an F underneath it It's just quite a lot of notes when you run them all together. So there's a couple of pick up notes to the last phrase. Again, you're just twiddling around to these notes. It's just going. of that, you've got a little pick up. You bring your third finger on there so you can get your thumb up to the G. Third on to the E. I do a little cut G to A. So G to A, hand comes off, two and one go back on, hands off, cut. So on this last bit, in my head, in the first tune part, we were doing the little turn, we've expanded, that we've drawn that turn out and made it equal melody notes rather than a grace note just decorating a melody note, but then we've added a couple of grace notes in. Don't think about it too much, just have a listen and have a play. So this becomes a variation. singing a verse and then a chorus in between. Don't always put the variation in, in between every single verse or maybe play a verse twice and then do the variation. When you're comfortable with it there's other places where I would add in cuts. That's a classic one. Sometimes I find these cuts help me flow with the tune. My left hand, my bass hand, pretty simple because you want the focus to be on what's happening up here. You're doing something interesting with your right hand, your melody hand. So don't do too much. along those 
those lines and if you noticed instead of just doing the cut I did this you can think of this several different ways you can think of it as being part of your chord I find it gets a little bit heavy if you think that way I think of them instead of just doing one cut I'm doing added in two little running grace notes up and I've got my chord underneath which is a s I might bounce at the end so that gives you an idea of how you could add this type of melodic variation into a tune it does work well on slow tunes because you can ex you've got long notes and you can expand into that so that gives you an idea of how to incorporate this, this melodic variation style into a tune that you're playing. Obviously it works better on slower tunes uh, because you want those long notes to fill in and you want, you want to be able to take the notes for a bit of a walk. There's a book, hopefully you can see that one, which would give you some wonderful ideas. The Master Piper nine notes that shook the world a border bagpipe repertoire pricked down by william dixon ad 1733 presented by matt seattle ad 1995 i think this is i hope this book is still in print uh, it, it's a manuscript of tunes by a border bagpiper william dixon and it's been made available to us by another border bagpipe player Matt Seattle and there's a, a, lots of information about the tune titles, the tunes, uh, about border music etc. But the thing that really strikes me about it is every tune just, that there isn't just one, you don't just get an A part and a B part and away you go, you know, do something with it. You get all sorts, for example all of these variations and you can see even just looking at it it's the same sort of thing that's happening it's quite sparse here but then you're getting into runs of notes so william dixon was taking his tunes for a walk and these these type of variations can sit under the harp under your fingers on the harp really really well so if you're interested in this style i could strongly recommend having a look at the tunes in William Dixon's manuscript, Border, Border Piper. I just want to show you that this same principle works equally well on a wire strung harp. So just let's just have a quick look at that same tune. basically played the same way. Same idea. Do a half scratch there for your, if you're paying attention.
and obviously I don't have a full bass range down here. So you're sort of implying your chords. Simply by adding a low A down there. And this is something that's worth playing about with on your gut harp as well. Again, another interesting thing is because I'm on a smaller harp, I can't just play C, G. So I'm playing it as a fourth the other way around, which does just give a little different feel. Lots of strong A's. Now here, I'm just going to go to G's and D's. to get rid of that G if you've played it. It's not ringing at the minute because I, I spoke in the middle but if you were playing this whole thing through you might well want to back hop for the wire players. Back to that G and C again. Now you might want to cross over and do a little echo there. And again, you could do a little bit of support on this. looking there I'm taking this out of a book that I published for a wire strung harp called Gid Scott Sangs which is where I originally did this this variation for this tune and I'm just noticing that I'm you know playing grace notes in different positions and things as, as you often do and my fingering's probably slightly changed as well but uh, I'll put that excerpt from the book in the handout for this week if you're interested also because it's got the words on it and a little bit of a glossary for some of the Scots words and I think that'd be useful for everyone. But do have a look on, you may have a small gut strung harp, so have a look at what I'm doing here to condense that. It's not so much condensing a big arrangement, it's just playing the, this particular tune on this particular instrument in a way that is right for both the tune and the instrument. So instead of always going down to these notes here because I don't have them, and I have to do something else that feels right. And that isn't just wire harps that are small, you can get small gut strung harps as well. So if you're playing a small gut strung harp, have a look at what's happening here. Likewise, if you're on a big gut strung harp, have a wee look at the slightly different decorations or the slightly different voicings, because I'm playing, not always playing the, the tonic note on the bass, etc. So just keep an open mind and, and have a look around. So, there will be a handout, there'll be a link in the description down below and that tells you where you can go and get that. There is a small charge for it just to try and support me in creating these, these free resources for everyone. So I hope this has been a useful one. It's slightly different and it's perhaps not what people immediately think of when they talk about ornamentation, but I think it's very much part of ornamenting tunes on a harp, doing something with the tunes, pointing the tunes, emphasising the tunes and, and doing these sort of melodic variations, to my mind, is very much part of that. So if you've just jumped in this week, that's great, but go back and have a look at the other episodes as well, where we go into more detail about some of these techniques of half scratches and cuts and things like that. So hope you enjoy it. I mentioned that the introduction that can be really effective just to 
do a slight variation to a phrase and, and players often have their own little variations that they'll play to phrases, their own little quirks if you like. And it can really just bring a tune to life. Uh, I'm just going to demonstrate here. This is a slightly different way of playing with, with, with coupled hands. So there's a tune I wrote that I performed in my album called The Rhymer's March. <laughs> And I was always just repeating it exactly the same way. Or. Beats or bees plat, that's not a huge change. And now I play. that instead of sometimes instead of that one all the way through so look out for that it tends to happen once you're really familiar with the tune and you've you've played it around a lot around your fingers you've played it maybe with other people as well listen to the way they've played it listen to other recordings of it and as you get comfortable with a tune these little phrase variations should arise, they'll hopefully arise, just don't be scared of them. <laughs> 